This series of videos documents a do-it-yourself construction of a ground-mounted 17.4 kilowatt electric solar array. The frame is largely constructed of standard 2-inch galvanized pipe secured in cylindrical concrete footers. The inclination of the panels is 19 degrees, while a higher inclination of approximately 30 degrees would provide 2 to 3 percent greater efficiency at this latitude, 19 degrees was chosen to improve aesthetics and to reduce the height and effective sail area of the array in case of potentially damaging windstorms. The lower inclination also reduces the amount of pipe required for construction of the frame. At the same time, an inclination of 19 degrees provides more than enough slope to allow the washing away of dust and pollen from the solar panel surfaces when it rains. The array was placed in a field approximately 180 meters from the nearest structure. Due to this distance, the first step in construction and the only part of construction requiring the use of heavy equipment was the plowing in of 240 volt 100 amp electric service wires at a depth of 0.6 meters or 2 feet. This wire was originally envisioned as an AC service connection but was later converted to DC, operating around 400 volts, in order to increase the energy transfer efficiency, but more importantly, to allow for the placement of the inverters indoors. Okay, so what am I looking at right now? Yeah, so these are the pipes uh, that I got from Home Depot and they're just regular schedule 42 inch pipe galvanized. And um, I've used a bandsaw to cut these to the length. So for the short uh, pipes, um, I cut those at five feet so I can make two out of a 10 foot pipe, so that's nice. For the long ones though, five feet's too short. 
Uh, so I went ahead and cut those to about eight feet. And <clears throat> I'll show you this one. This is, um, so this is one of the five foot pipes. This pipe will be sticking out of the ground about uh, three feet. So I'll dig a three foot hole and we'll, we'll set this in up on some bricks and um, fill that with concrete. And so about two feet of it will be down into the concrete. Mm -hmm. And I put a cap on the end. This is the part that will be buried in the concrete with some thread sealing on it for it to be waterproof. So I was thinking that uh, with that cap down in the concrete, you know, that would keep it from getting yanked up. I'm a little worried about, you know, if we have a big hurricane or something like that, a lot of wind, that it could take it like a sail and want to lift it out. Uh -huh. So by putting that little flange on it, um, you know, that should, should keep it from coming up out of the concrete. And okay. then the concrete itself will be pretty weighty. And, uh, so that gives a little, that gives a little, a little lip to, so that it's not smooth and pull straight up out of the concrete. Right. Yeah. And then, uh, up on the top, now this is where I probably have done a little bit of oak still, um, but <clears throat> I wanted to seal the pipe so that, um, the water could get inside of it. Uh, so I cut out these, I'll show you right over here, these little discs. And this, um, I don't know if this was a good idea or not, but I, I cut these little circles out with an acetylene torch mm -hmm. and then ground them down smooth. And um, the idea was, let's see if I can get one of these. There we go, so this is the long one. So the threaded end on the bottom, that's where the cap will go. Mm -hmm. And then on the, the top, I can't make this any bigger because of the end cap that goes over it. I'll mm -hmm. show you that in a little bit. So to seal that up, I'm going <clears> to <throat> take these little discs and those just set in there flush and I'll tap that in with a hammer and get it flush. And then I run a weld bead around that and so that seals up the inside of the pipe. Hopefully that'll, you know, I didn't want rainwater getting down in there. And so it'll be, it'll be air airtight on both ends? Yeah, yeah. And it's zinc coated on the inside, so it probably wouldn't have made any difference okay. anyway. But um, I figured I'd do it. That took a long time. It was yeah. a lot of time grinding the circles out um, and getting them smooth. But the reason that I can't just put a, you know, put a, put a cap over this end you know, because I could thread it mm -hmm. and then put a cap on it. But the way that this is uh, made to go in, so here's a short one. So thread a cap on the bottom. And then I got to clean it up. But there's the welded cap on the top after it's been welded in. Yep. And then this is the Iron Ridge top cap. It goes over it. So you see it. You know, I see, and then your assembly your so assembly bolts onto onto that. Right. But I can't I can't put a cap there because this has to fit snugly over the top. So the little disc that I cut out fits on the inside of the diameter. Okay. And then that goes in here with the set screws. And then later in the project we'll we'll show hopefully how how the long, the long pipes, you know, run along this with the U-bolts going through through that. All right. So there's the little disc that we cut out. And that's 3 16 I started with quarter inch and I dropped down to 3 16 because it was easier to cut. And then there's just a little bit of a taper on that to try to get it to wedge in. But we'll set that there, try to find a, a way that it fits in nice. And then we'll try to tap that in. There we go. There we go. You get a close up of that. You can see it's wedged in there. It's not quite round, so there's some gap there that we'll fill in with a weld bead. Mm -hmm. And I'm using, um, for this welding, I'm using uh, 330 seconds uh, Hobart um, 6013. So we'll run that bead all the way around and this uh, 330 seconds is giving me the, the right amount of heat to, to fill that in. I, I tried some with 1.8 and it was 
just a little too much um, for this thickness of metal. Mm -hmm. So I'm having better luck with the 332nd on that. Some of the some of these discs are too small, and uh, I grind them out and they won't fit, or they they'll, they'll, they'll fall through. So right. for one of those. I have this little magnet thing that I got that helps me do right angles. So mm -hmm. I clip the disc onto the magnet and then just set that over it, and it would hold it in place. Oh, I see. And then I could do a tack and a tack, and then pull it off and tack, tack, and then that worked. But most of them I've been able to cut so that they're snug fit, and they just go in just like that. Next up, welding.